Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on this very planet, this very creation of the Most High. Elohim, I welcome you. As I do so, I will encourage you to welcome all those around you, friends, family, and lovers of freedom. This is an unadulterated live presentation on this very glorious temple of truth, on where the light will ceaselessly shine that the restoration of Biafra may happen before us, before this very lucky generation. This gospel we shall preach unequivocally and without fear before our enemies. That Elohim may be merciful upon us. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you because, unlike any other, this very hallowed platform, this very radio Biafra, is listened to across the entire 24 time zones of this very world. Because we are beer friends, we are everywhere. We are indeed the salt of this very earth. Wherever we go to, we bring light. We bring enlightenment. And we bring the glory of God upon that very community. Not minding the distractions or enemies. Not minding all they have done and will continue to do to tarnish and to desecrate the wonderful name of Biafra and those who are privileged to answer it. We are here to right all the wrongs. We are here to follow the path of the straight and the narrow. We are here to do that which is right before God in heaven and humanity on this very earth, we are here to restore Biafra. And regardless of the sacrifice that we are called upon to make, this is one glorious and righteous path we will not deviate from. My name is Namde Kano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, all over this very planet. And by the grace of Elohim, I will remain ever faithful and loyal servant of the wonderful people of Biafra, as mandated by heaven because what we do is not through the design of man but is an edict sent all the way down from the abode of the creator of everything that is made i welcome you once again and this evening before please it is very very important that you get your pen and your paper ready do not forget your common sense don't abandon it that is all we ask of you because the problem that we continue to encounter not just as biafrans not just as africans but black people all over the world is our inability to reason our inability to discern our inability to digest information and be able to do something tangible with it that is why every other race have overtaken us that is why we continue to languish behind that is why development is almost unattainable and that is why mediocrity pervades every aspect every sector of governance and every sphere of human endeavor 
this evening we shall shed light on this very bane of our time and after this program i believe very strongly that we will have attained at least attained at least a modicum of reasoning capacity because without reason we are not human beings we are animals and that is why the damnable contraption the british devilish creation that is called nigeria will continue to fail because people do not reason they are incapable of reasoning we call it common sense but i assure you it is not cheap it is not common either it is not cheap and it is not common and this evening i will take you through a journey i call it a journey of hopelessness and stupidity there is one reoccurring decimal in everything that is wrong with the zoo in everything that is wrong with black africa in everything that is wrong with our inability to escape poverty and deprivation our inability to escape dictatorship our inability to run an open civilized society all the fault lies in the brain of a black man our brain is the problem thankfully ipob is not locked into that should i say cycle of ignorance we have broken away from it and this evening we shall enlighten humanity because this is the greatest university on this earth if you don't learn from radio biafra then you know that you are a boy you're not designed to learn you never learn anything in your life that is why when we gather here to offer praise to the most high when we congregate all over the world to listen to this redeeming gospel of enlightenment things happen in the lives of those that seek the truth and the same will happen tonight this is a live presentation on the sixth day of november in the year of our most high yellow 2019 the time now if i'm not mistaken is approximately nine minutes past 7 pm in the land of biafra and so it is regardless of where you are the same number of minutes past the top of the hour without biafra africa is blind that is why there is an ordinate conspiracy that is why there is a concerted effort by the powers that be to extinguish this very flame because they know that without biafra africa will remain in the doldrums forever and ever they know without biafra a black man is nothing they know without biafra there can never be any dignity without biafra there will be no enlightenment without biafra life itself will lose its meaning for everybody who come from the sub-saharan region of africa that is why biafra will always lead the way and this very noble family of ipob will always pilot its affairs because if you find yourself in ipob it is not by accident you were there through divine mandate from heaven only the blessed children of the most high can be part of this very noble family that is why we are relentless those who do not understand the meaning of the word relentless should go and look it up in a dictionary we are not going to stop nothing can stop us death can't even stop us it doesn't matter how many that dies it doesn't matter how many that collapse on the left and to the right as long as there's a way in front of us we will continue to march heaven knows we will march until freedom is assured until biafran sovereignty is enthroned on this very earth nothing will ever stop it nothing will stop it therefore we must pray others may feel ashamed but we do not 
We know we never made ourselves, only Elohim in heaven, Chukwokikabiyama decreed that we must come. And we have come, and Biafra must be restored in our time. It doesn't matter what the Fulefus do. It doesn't matter how many presidential laws they promise them. It doesn't matter what they come up with tomorrow. It doesn't matter the places that the British High Commissioner intends to visit or may have visited. What concerns us is only one irreducible fact of life. That fact of life is Biafra, and Biafra must come. Anama poko chine kenan ke prumi heni neni no basi sueli gwekob. The angels are circling the throne of the Creator. They bow and they sing. They say, "Glory be to Your holy name. Glory be to Your holy name, because You are holy." In the Chukwokika Biyama, do we put all our trust? The same way our ancestors put their trust in thee and you sustained them, so have this very generation. Do not allow us to be confused. This is the greatest prayer we can ever pray today and ask for your help. Because our people, some of us are lost in a spiral of confusion. As a result of the irredeemably corrupt society that they unceremoniously and disgracefully found themselves in, in the damnable zoological republic of Nigeria. Come and deliver your children in your righteousness, we pray. Incline also Elohim to escape this very evil that is Nigeria. Come and listen to our prayers and deliver us. Because only you is our strong habitation. We have no other fortress apart from thee. There we have decided to continually reside. Because you have given us laws and commandments to save us. You are our rock and our fortress. You will deliver Biafra Elohim out of the hands of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel people that pretend by paying lip service that they love us. The only thing they want is oil and gas and to destroy your land. They have sown the seeds of confusion that brother no longer know, brother. That what you once made as Biafra they have dissected, they have bastardized, they have balkanized, they have destroyed into enclaves that are unrecognizable even before thy sight. They claim that a man can create a nation, that a man can do what only you, Elohim, has done from time immemorial, which is to create a nation. Only thee, O oh Lord, can create a nation, not man. Everything made by man is temporary. All the handiwork of Frederick Lugard will come to zero because she did not ordain it. No man can attach his name to the creator. Only you is the creator Elohim. The work of men must perish and come to nothing. Your will must endure in our lives and Biafra will come to stand to represent your glory and your light in Africa that the world may say that indeed the glory of the Most High dwellest even amongst the inhabitants of the dark continent. Therefore, we call upon thee to be at our side, at our front and on our back, to shield and to guide us into victory, to sustain all the efforts we are making to ensure that Biafra comes through your eternal grace, that your name Elohim will be glorified in the land of the ancients, in the land of Biafra, not just this generation, not the generation of our children or their children's children, but for eternity, for as long as there is a Biafra on this very earth, oh Lord, we will worship your holy name in truth and in every honesty. 
that your will may be done upon our lives always now and forevermore we pray he said he said he said we have come to preach the gospel of redemption anybody who is aware of how we do things here will testify to our consistency i have chosen to broadcast this very evening not only to bring you the news as it happens but also to analyze and to draw or should i say to tease out the importance of some of the news and the need for all of us to understand it the way it is truthfully without lies because we do not lie here we have come to preach a gospel that will remain forever and ever that is why anything we say here comes to fruition anything we say must come to pass that is why this platform is very, very special and holy. This evening, I want you to listen very attentively. Get your pen and your paper handy and ready. Very, very critical. If your friends are not listening, if your family members are not listening, please endeavor to encourage them to listen to this broadcast tonight. It is very, very pivotal, very, very important that we understand and be properly schooled in the art of statecraft understand this very well for us to build the biafra of our dreams we need to reason and to think in a particular way if we think like other black africans do we will fail if we attempt to think the way that other Africans do, believe you me, we will fail. We must think like their friends, very pure, very rigorous. We must investigate. We must at all times be very close to our common sense. Very, very important because if you don't have it, you will not understand this very gospel that I'm about to preach this very evening. It could be morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. But where I am, it is evening. And so also, is it in Biafra land? This program this evening is about correcting what I call defective reasoning in our people we must begin by asking ourselves a very simple question why is it that other parts of the world are developing including even the south american states that were only a few decades ago were classified as third world countries ask yourself this question why is it that south africa that was built by white people is now going backwards Ask yourself why there is the preponderance of dictatorship and totalitarianism in Africa. Ask yourself why politics in Africa is sentimentally loaded towards tribal and ethnic loyalty. Ask yourself why you do not have light. Ask yourself why you don't have drinking water ask yourself why you keep on allowing fool after fool idiot after idiot to occupy the positions of power ask yourself why those that be would always find the need to manipulate and to rig elections to the detriment of the overall well-being of the entire population ask yourself why your schools are not functioning ask yourselves why you have no hospitals ask yourselves why you don't have any good roads ask yourselves why there is no housing you must keep you should continue to ask yourself these questions because any day you find the answer to it believe you me if somebody were to stand in front of you and say i'm a nigerian you will shoot them dead i'm telling you 
Only then will you appreciate the gravity of the stupidity of a zoo animal. Only then will you understand it. You must pay very close attention this evening. This gospel is very important. You must understand it. This lecture this evening is directed primarily at Biafrans. Biafrans, all the way from Idoma land to Opobo, from a Wanke, all the way from a Wanke to Bakasi. You must listen and listen very, very carefully and attentively this evening because we all know that one Nigeria, one zoo is unworkable and is doing more harm than good. We have also seen with our eyes and in our own foolishness, some people who can never be saved, all they talk about is presidency in 2023. All they talk about is the turn of our village and the elected office. They have come. They have not learned anything. They are not good students of history. They are not scholars of social development and advancement. All they do is to sit in one place and pontificate over issues that are, in fact, quite frankly, irrelevant. The only thing that can save you when you are in a quagmire as our people have found themselves in today is to seek redemption. That redemption comes from freedom. Freedom is the foundational base upon which every advancement is possible. You can be materially well off. You can be rich as much as you like. But if you do not have freedom, you are nothing. And no matter how hard you try, you can never attain that pinnacle of preeminence the way that the United States have enjoyed more than any other civilization on the face of this very earth since the inception of mankind. Why is America the longest surviving civilization of its kind? is because they have freedom it may not be perfect but they have it they debate it they advance it they curtail it they do all they like with it. power primarily till this very day reside with the people that is the reason why they're advancing but in our place all some fools want to talk about is election cycle election and i have said this before if election is the panacea if election is that magic pill that when you take it all your problems are solved why are you queuing for visa to you to usa why do you want to travel to europe and let me ask you this question the prime minister of canada is he from your village the answer is no so it doesn't actually matter who is in power it is how the society is structured i am not leaving it to the, or should I say, the goodwill or the platitude or should I say expected good behavior of whoever is in power. You have to draw up, you have to lay the foundation, you need to prepare the structure upon which you pin all your hopes. And that is freedom. Not something that man can give you. It is something we can all give to ourselves through the grace of God in heaven. You must also understand very, very importantly, very, very critically, as we advance this very evening, that our shops are being burnt. The latest one is Idumota. They went to Anicha, they bombed, they firebombed it. People died. How many days, how many days we have all forgotten? We know how people value lives, where we come from, but all of a sudden we no longer value lives anymore. We all understand that. When people die these days, it doesn't, at least in the most horrific of circumstances, it doesn't occur to anybody anymore to say, how do we stop this problem from happening again? I just want to draw this thing out so that you understand it very clearly. You know, involving Boeing 777 MAX, or whatever they call it. You know that.
I want to show you an example between how white people reason and black people and why white people are advancing and blacks are not, especially those from Africa. I want you to understand it in the way that you reason. What happened after the Ethiopia crash? Both the United States government and the Federal Safety and Transportation Board, whatever they call it in the USA, and Boeing, and airlines all over the world sat down and said, we don't want to lose more lives. What did they do? They grounded the entire fleet of Boeing. Is it, uh, now, understand this very carefully. Let us compare the number of people that was killed in Onesha with those that died in those twin air crash involving Boeing 777 MAX. I'm sure that's what they call it. If I'm mistaken, please correct me. We have not learned anything. Do you know that the Alamajiri came to Onesha, packed their tanker, opened it up? Some idiots went to go and, um, and collect the highly inflammable liquid in with open containers. The same Alamajiri set fire to it and our people burned. Shops were burned, businesses destroyed. Do you know that the same thing happened in Mbano? Some people foolishly went to go and e replicate exactly what happened in Onesha. The same thing happened at Inu. We know that the one at Omaba, they burned, they decided to go and explode and destroy our businesses. They are burning our businesses in Lagos. They are burning our businesses in Kano. Even the Nigerian government have now compelled the Ghanaian government to suppress our people in Ghana who are doing their legitimate business in Ghana, asking them to shut down their shops. Do you know the funniest thing? This is not the number one trading news for our people. It is not the number one discussion point for our people. All some fools are concerned about is about 2023. Is about how to elect their friend or their village man to go to Abuja and become something that nobody had ever become before in the zoo. Something that Zeke never became. Something that Hiroshi tried and failed. Something that Ikweme tried and was frustrated. One for reason was there for some months. What happened? Nothing happened. Till this very day. The same group of people responsible for the deplorable state of our roads those who couldn't build hospitals, those who are presiding over our crumbling schools, those who have made it their life's mission to frustrate the yearnings and aspirations of our youth, you graduate, you have no job, and all you can do is to try and defend the system that is indefensible. You can't you see that you have something wrong with you upstairs? Ochanja Market was burnt. We have sent our commiserations. The same thing we are doing for those at Idumota in Lagos. Ebo instead, some of you do not know, is an active theater as we speak. Fulanese are struggling to take our land, and IPOB is there telling them it will never happen. Some of you don't know that the, the so called boundary disputes between so called indigenous of Benue and, da, and those in Ebo, that they are brother fighting brother. You don't know that. Some of us don't know this. There are some people in the northern part of Eboin and down to the, the eastern part of Eboin as well who do not know that these boundary disputes, all these community clashes were engineered by a full army caliphate to divide us. Do you know that the Igbos in Eboin are fighting Igbos in Benue? Are you aware of that? Some of you don't know. And now the full will come with their cattle to take over our land by claiming after all it is in dispute. Are you aware of that? Do you know that, you see, this is, I will touch this later on. When people say that you don't have regard for the likes of Ohaneze and the governors, I say to them for a good reason. If I were to be, or if I was the leader of our people during the gerrymandering of our borders, I would tell them, no, you better kill me or put me in prison before you gerrymander our borders away. How can you have three Igbo speaking communities, Igbo speaking, Igbo speaking, carve them into Benue. And today they are the ones fighting their own brothers, their own flesh and blood, because one stupid illiterate Alamajiri from the north said that here is now the new boundary. And Ohanez accepted it. 
they are so-called um, uh, uh, we are the elite. They accepted it. The balkanization of your own land, you accepted it in order to please your full animal masters because of the contracts they will give you, because they will uh, make your child a minister, because they will give you um, a senatorial seat or maybe a governor. The same thing happened in Cross River. Igbo speaking community in Cross. Of course, we are one people, we are the same Biafra. I'm just trying to tell you how we that claim we are sensible have allowed Fulani Caliphate that didn't go to school cattle us to be manipulating and twisting our brain. Of course, I know that Britain is advising them. I know that very well. It's part of the divide and rule. Why don't you cut them into two? Take half and give them to the other people and tell them they're not part of Igbo, and then they will agree. That some idiots are doing in Anioma. But we are counting them, are we not? These are the things you ought to know. Every blessed day, people don't reason anymore. Our people no longer reason. They burn your shops in our in our in our nation. They burn it in our bank. They burn Newi. They burn um, um Idumata. They burn those in Kano. And you get up in the morning and you carry on as if nothing has ever happened to you. You just blissfully ignorant of the threat you are facing, not just as an individual or your family, but as a race. We are in mortal mortal danger. And who are those to blame? They are the people that the British High Commissioner have come to see. She started her tour yesterday. She will finish tomorrow. And some people stupidly and foolishly ask, what is it that IPOB is doing? We cannot see anything because you're blind. If not for IPOB, why do you think the British High Commissioner will come to Biafra land to talk about heaven knows what? I will go into that in details later. Why do you think she came to talk about peace and one Nigeria? If nothing is happening, do you think she would come? And if something is happening as it is really happening, who are those responsible for that? Is it not IPOB? Who else is doing it? Who else has the capacity, the intellectual capacity, or should I say the cloud to do or to compel the British High Commissioner to visit Biafra that they never go to. They don't visit. The previous one came when I was in Kuja prison to ask them if I should be killed or released. I know what some of the so-called frontline politicians and traditional rulers said. I know. Because in Britain, there is Freedom of Information Act. If you ask questions, they will give you the information. I want to sound a note of warning to everybody, the so-called traditional rulers, the so-called um, politicians, that anything you say to the British ambassador, let me call her ambassador, the high commissioner, we in IPOB will hear about it. All we need to do is to apply for Freedom of Information Act, demanding to know what transpired when the woman went to Enugu and a few other places and they will tell us exactly what you said. And then we will come after you. The only thing we want is Biafra. If you want to contest for presidency for the rest of your life, you and your family, you, your wife and your children, that is your business, do it within Biafra. Not within the zoo. Because they have nothing to offer and I shall also demonstrate later on. I will tell you why contesting in Nigeria is foolish and hopeless. If not for IPOB, who else? I ask. Who, who are you? Can you do it? Do you have the liver or the stomach? You can't do it. You can stay by the side and gap all you like. You cannot do it. You are not called to do it. You don't have what it takes to embark on this very mission. So when we speak, you must listen. The same one that I told you that Fulanis we are coming, some of you thought it was a joke and they came. They killed, they slaughtered, they raped our mothers, they pillaged, and they went. Nothing happened to them. Because the first operation pattern dance came, nobody did anything. That is why now, every two, two weeks, they have another operation happening in the southeast. Uh, southeast is a theater of war. Uh, no longer not is the southeast this time around. Some of you foolishly go through social media like idiots who cannot reason. Somebody's telling you to your face, I am coming to kill you. I'm coming to take your family away from you. And you're there foolishly and hopelessly. 
responding to comments and issues with sarcasm. And I wonder what sort of people are you? What we are doing now was exactly what happened during slavery. The white man will travel all the way from the USA, from Europe. They will come to West Africa. They will harvest us here like you are the harvesting cassava in the farm. How many people came for the raid? Not of the five white people. Not of the five. They will raid the village of two, three thousand. Put us in their ship. One person will be waiting for one white man to tie our legs with chain and our hands onto which one white man will tie up to one thousand people. And we are there watching. Like Mumu. And that's what we are doing today. Exactly what we are doing today. They are killing us. They are destroying us. They are making our life a misery. And all some idiots can think about is, is presidency. Whatever happened to freedom? Before the white man came, did we live in the same country with Fulani people? The answer is no. Did the world come to an end? The answer is no. Some idiots say it is um, you need population to have power that God created um, uh, Nigeria. And I asked them, I want you to go and Google who created the United States of America? Who created Canada? Who created Scotland? Who created England? Who, simple Google search. Who created Russia? Who created Japan? And then you come back and write in who, who created Nigeria. Compare all the answers and you will see it. You will see before your own eyes. Your stupidity will begin to leave you tonight if you can just try this. That is to tell you that only God can create a nation. Because when you put in who created Nigeria, you will see Frederick Lugard. When you ask for that civilized nations, you can never see one single soul because nations emerge organically, organic growth. Before England came into existence, they had the Normans. No, they had the they had the Vikings, they had the Saxons, they had the Normans. William the Conqueror, 1066, the first king of England at the Battle of Hastings, defeated the, the, the Celtic king and established French man. They are French. The first king of England was a Frenchman, William, from Normandy. That is how nations emerge. Nobody, if you ask people now, who created England? They can never tell it is William of Normandy. Never. Because they know it's God that can create. There are forces at play before a nation emerges. Forces at play. One man embarked, they called him back from, from Hong Kong. He boarded a rickety ship only to stop the, 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 the eastern advance of the French in Dahomey. They said, you, 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 your name is Nigeria. And somebody is saying, I am proud to be a Nigerian. Did you see how foolish you are? Do you see how stupid you are? Do you see why we call you animals? Do you see the reason why Nigeria is a zoo? Can you now begin to appreciate this very fact? That you were created by a white man. Therefore, you are subhuman. Therefore, you can never with any sense of credibility claim to be a child of God. Because you're a child of a contraption created by a fellow mortal. Shame upon you. Shame upon all of you that say you are Nigerians. Shame upon you. We will continue. Hey, as we speak tonight, an active theater of conflict. Autonomous community against autonomous community. That's what they want. That is what they want. When the international community asks questions about Hey, as we've been telling them in the USA, they will say, oh, um, there are people that are fighting themselves. al will come to our land divide us into pieces and say you you're now part of heaven knows what the name is and you start fighting each other because we have failed the reason people who didn't go to school people that move cattle from place to place people that drink the blood of cattle oh my goodness do you know we don't eat blood do you know we don't eat blood those are the people who are now your lord and your master. 
because you are so hungry, devoid of dignity, that you no longer know your place at the table. That's how sad it is. Then we shall continue. We have become deaf and unheeding to warning signs that our enemies do not mean well for us. Fulani do not mean well for us. Anytime you open your useless mouth to say one well, Nigeria, you are bringing the end of our race closer. You are seeking to destroy us as a people. You are doing something that you're not supposed to do. And that is hastening the demise of our race. Because Nigeria shouldn't have existed in the first place. A white man cannot go and create a country elsewhere, only in Africa. Because Africans are stupid. And you will see Africans say, I will do everything I can to defend this white man's creation. No wonder they bow down before a graven image of a white person. They bow down before an idol. Graven image. That is where you get your inferiority complex from. That is the foundational basis of your stupidity, your ignorance, and your hopelessness. That is why we are poor. That is why we cannot build roads. That is why we have engineers who cannot build our own bridges. We rely on Judas Baker. That is why we have doctors. People are traveling abroad for medical treatment. That is why we have teachers. But our schools are crumbling and they learn nothing. You stay in a country where, as a deliberate government policy history is not taught in schools and the people just uh, <laughs> they just carry on now <laughs> now nah, nah, so i see i'm old i mean are, are you are you people human beings or what are you sure you're human beings maybe some we are created to serve a very should i say useless purpose in life and nigeria is making all of you to fulfill that when an idiot says, I am, I love Nigeria, Nigeria is my country, you are looking at a complete animal, an un, 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 unrepentant beast, forever and ever, because they cannot reason. Their brain is not working. Had people come together to say, we now want to create a country or a nation called XYZ, that is understandable. You can say the people sat at Susan so day and decided to come together to form their own nation or their own country. A white man came to come and do business with Royal Niger Company, just pure business, economic transaction, and ended up calling you, giving you a name, and you're answering. The same way I gave my dog Jack a name is how the, the man named all of you Nigerians. And your I'm, I'm a proud Nigerian. We Nigerians, I, I look at these fools and I, I pity them. I pity them, honestly. Sometimes I used to ask myself that there is no way God can make people more stupid as he has made Nigerians. People can, there, there, is, there is no other low, people cannot go any lower. In terms of stupidity, there is no other place to go. That is the absolute work of ignorance and hopelessness. What I say, I back it up with facts. Britain has come. But why have they come, you may ask. <laughs> we are about to find out <laughs> this very evening. British High Commissioner, they have come again. Do they used to come before? No, they, don't, they, they never came before. Why have they come? That is the question. I will tell you, because it's everywhere. And listen very carefully and attentively, please. The British High Commissioner to the zoo, Katriona Lang is her name, has concluded plans to embark on a tour of Imo, Anambra, and Enugu states from November 5th to 7th, 5th to the 7th, which is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. British heck, what is she coming for? During Operation Python Dance, they never came. When they kill our people, they never... Um, maybe now they can see what their boys are doing on the ground, what their Fulani boys are doing. Killing and maiming, arresting and detaining without trial, extorting money at um, um, uh, multiple checkpoints. Maybe now she can see it, what uh, their Fulani boys, house niggers, are doing for them on the streets of their Fulani. They have said it all, and the reason is, why is she coming at this time? That is the problem. Anytime we make a diplomatic move abroad, you see them back uh, in the zoo, you see them back at home trying to connive, trying to, uh, uh, how can I put it, trying to, 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 
to put a stop to what they know is unstoppable. This IPOB that I had, I'm being honest with you, nobody can stop it. It doesn't matter who you are. Only God in heaven can. And Chukwu Abiyama cannot. Because this was what he mandated that should be done. The reason why my father married my mother is for where we are today. That Biafra may come. They have served their purpose. Write it down somewhere. On this platform, I said to you that I will sacrifice everything, sacrifice everything, including my parents. I said it on Radio Biafra. And I will do it 10 times over. And Biafra will come. It doesn't matter. I say to our enemies, double your efforts. Do whatever you can to stop us. You can never succeed. Because they say one with God is majority. We are not asking for something that doesn't belong to us. We are asking for freedom for everybody. Including the Alamajiris who cannot go to school. Including those who are on the streets uh, doing uh, Babi Allah. We want everybody to be free and to have a very decent life. But you cannot get it with Fulani Caliphate in charge. It is impossible. Not in a trillion years. Not in a trillion years. Those who were heads of state at the age of um, 31, 32, 33, when a 50 year old is talking, they say, Oh, you're a small boy. But you, 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 you were a minister at the age of 29. And the, the most painful thing is that it, oh my, I don't, is the education system in the zoo. I think it is, uh, that is what uh, we ought to be blaming, to be honest with you. Very sad indeed. Let us go back to British High Commissioner. When you on a Megan Nalid, what has she come to do in our land? What is she doing in Biafra land? She has come because uh, the effect of what we did in the USA is now reaching them. Important people are asking questions. A greatest interview to VOA, which is listened to in over 240 languages across the world. So the world is aware of what we are doing now. Previously, they never knew. In being honest with you, they told us they never knew, but now they know. And do you know why the British diplomat is coming? She's coming to find out if these waves we are making all over the world, this thing that IPOB is doing, do they have the support of their full and slaves amongst our people? That's why she has come. That's why she came. And that's why they will continue coming. Anytime we make any serious inroad abroad, you will see them coming. One Nigeria, Nigeria is unbreakable. Nigeria, pray for Nigeria because they know that in as much as I'm alive and IPUB is here, I will break Nigeria into pieces. When I speak, write it on a piece of paper. Bring your jealousy, your greed, your envy, bring everything you have, or of course, you want to add it on top of it. You cannot stop this movement. Nobody can. No Jupiter can. You cannot. I say it with every ounce of conviction that no human being born of mortal flesh can stop IPOB. You've not been given birth to it. Now listen. This woman came. Why? This is what her office said, the British High Commission. That is, uh, which is the British Embassy in the zoo. This is what they, they had to, I call it the uh, zoo because I can't call that place Nigeria. It means nigger area. The, the place of black, down and out people, people of darkness. In the Urisi, people who are blind. It's called Nigeria, nigger area. That's the meaning of it. I can't be calling you. So a zoo is even better for you. During her time in the Southeast, according to the British High Commission, Katriona will engage with, listen, they have come, listen carefully engage with government officials and civil society groups in the states the one should be visiting i am very much looking forward to this trip to the southeast the first time listen the first time i will be visiting the region as british high commissioner the first time she's come she's been to other places though. why is she coming you think she loves you no it's to stop ipov that's why they have come can they stop us are you worried? Are you panicking? They can never ever stop us. It is impossible. Impossible. I'm telling you the truth. Before God in heaven and man on this earth, it is impossible. Nobody can stop IPUB. Impossible. She's coming for the first time. <laughs> Listen, the Southeast is the cradle of culture. Not our name. Oh. 
But in the England she comes from, listen carefully to me. In the England where this woman comes from, they have Lancashire, they have Yorkshire, they have um, 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 they have um, um, uh, uh, Cornwall, they have Wales, they have um, 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 Merseyside, they have um, they have um, Teesside, they have um, all the shares you can think of. But where I come from, the land of my ancestors, the land of the ancients. My name is Southeast. Southeast of where? I'm just asking, southeast of where? She's saying, I am coming to, is southeast a name? If I'm traveling to Germany, I can go to Bavaria. I can go to Westphalia. I can go to all those other beautiful places like Hamburg. Am I going to say, oh, I'm traveling to the southeast of Germany? Does that make sense to you? If you go to USA, you say, oh, I'm traveling to northeast of USA. They'll ask you where exactly. Is it Washington? Is it New York? Is it Delaware? Is it uh, um, 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 uh, uh, Massachusetts? Where are you going to? My name is Southeast, according to the British. This is what they told the uh, fallen house niggers to call us. Uh, your name is Southeast. Some people read this. They laugh and they smile. If you ask them, where do you come from? They say, we are from the Southeast. That's how foolish you are. You can't even start up and say, no, my name is not Southeast, my name is Igbo, or my name is uh, Biafra, or my name is Zefik, or my name is Ibibi, or my name is Idoma, my name is, even if I even say Ibanke, if you want, of course we know that Igbo. You can say I'm, I'm Kalabari, you can say I'm Izon, you can say I'm Oron, you can say I am Ibibi. That is who you are. That is your ancient identity from your ancestors from the time immemorial. Not southeast, south, south, upper delta, lower delta, like rubbish. Nonsense. Look at how a white woman is using your brain because you are fools. You cannot reason. You cannot think properly. You cannot digest any information because you lack the ability to criticize and think properly. Your name is Southeast, but go okay. Somebody should write to the commissioner, to British High Commissioner, and ask her, Where are you from? She'll say, UK, yes. Which part of UK are you from? She will tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a Scot. I'm Scottish. But when I meet her, she will expect me to say, I am from Southeast. Does Southeast have a meaning? Is that a name of somebody Southeast? Is this Southeast of, um, of, um, of Afghanistan or Southeast of, um, of Uzbekistan? Southeast of where? Do you know, at, uh, when I said to my father that I want to travel to England to go and study, he, he asked me why. I said, because you cannot learn anything at UNN. He said, oh, but that is the premier university. People pray to, to go into UNN. I said, I am not going to that one. This is not school. Do you know what it means to be in a citadel of knowledge university? And it's like a glorified secondary school. I said to my father, I will not go. He thought I, was, I said, I'm not going anywhere until he sent me to England, and he did. That is how we roll. What I seek is knowledge. Knowledge more than anything else in the world. Wisdom and knowledge is all I seek. Nothing more, nothing less, and things must be done properly. That is why I am not a millionaire. If I wanted to be, I could have become, but I said no. Because this is right. You cannot be a millionaire and your people are reasoning like imbecile. Oh, I wouldn't use the word imbecile because it's a disability. People reason like fools. I won't allow that. We must reason properly. A woman is coming to my land and she's calling me Southeast, yes? And I'm asking her, where are you from? Southeast of where are you from yourself? <laughs> but of course, she can't answer. They said we are, listen to her, to what she said. She's trying to butter us up now because we are fools. We are Southeast is the cradle of culture, education, trade, and investment. I'm excited to get a first hand view of the strides the governments and leaders in Yemen and Enugu are making in the development of their states. Do you see how evil they are? In Britain, which I respect very much, they know this very well. I respect England because um, I've said it many times. 
that it is the most civilized piece of territory on the face of this very earth, without a doubt. Because he, in England, uh, they do things by reason. If you can go to court and convince the court that black is blue, they will rule in your favor. Maybe not these days, but in the olden days. We are reason prevailed, England. After seeing the arrested development in our land, she's saying the strides they are making. Do you know why she's saying they're making strides? Because they're working with Fulani. Fulani have told them what to say. Uh, if you go look for Biano, if you go look for Ipaz, these are the idiots we are using, but go and promote them and say they're doing very well. So because you're a white woman, you see, if those um, uh, foolish uh, Igbos, if they see you as a white woman, praising uh, that baboon of a governor. They will say, oh, since a white woman has said that the governors are trying, that uh, maybe they're trying. Uh, do you, are you following what I'm saying? They can deceive you, but not us. They can't deceive us. I'm only on number one, oh, I've not started. Only on number one. To tell you why they have come. And the reason, the only thing she will take away, this high commissioner will take away from Biafra land, the heart of Biafra land is this that okay we are still doing our job we have seen them and um they're, they're not going to support biafra anytime soon that's why she came you never came before it's now that i went to washington went to the senate and to the house of to the congress and back is now that you remember that you need to go and see the strikes they're making not to talk about those that they killed but britain is at the forefront of making sure that the protest in hong kong is going on Britain cover every protest in the world. They report their right. But anytime we are killed, the same people you claim you care about, they have been slaughtering us since 2015. You've said nothing about it. Not condemned them. Because we are black people and we do not reason very well. We are the cradle of education. That is what the High Commissioner said with her mouth. But when it comes to presidency, you support al Majid from the north, where there is no education. But here you're saying uh, Biafrans are the cradle of education. But when you go to the, when it comes to presidency, who can, who can, there is something I'll pray for you later on. You would tell any country that will support the, even contemplate, allowing such a person to be on a ballot paper, the name of such a person, talk less of voting him in, or uh, rigging the, the alter ego in, in into office. That is the thing wrong with our people. And we must correct it. We are correcting this is radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct. On one topic, I spent one hour on British visit to Biafra land. Because of my visit to Washington, I've taken almost 45 minutes. Then we must continue. Unless some people are complaining about their data that they want to go. Then uh, others will, um, you know, perhaps. Um, give them the details later on. But for now, we must proceed. Now that the British High Commissioner is in Biafra land, maybe she has come to see the population reduction strategy because Britain supported Fulani during the war to kill us, to Islamize us. It's on record, it's a known fact. They have removed every trace of Biafran war from British archives. That is also a known fact. I keep asking myself and I keep asking my British friend, why do you hate Biafra so much? What did we do to you? What did we do? I keep asking, what did Biafra do to Britain that Britain has this hatred, this, this blind hatred for Biafra? Why? Because we fought you for nearly 100 years before Rosuku fell. What is it? Because of Ekumeku? Because Ekumeku fought you? Okay, you went to Fulani and accepted the Alamajiri because they have nothing upstairs. They accepted you. That is why you must destroy. Dividing us into Niger Delta and Debo didn't save you. Southeast and South South didn't work. Now it is to come and supervise the killing of our people. Are you telling me the British never knew? Are you telling me they never knew what Buratai is doing? Are you telling me that the British mission to to the zoo called nigeria that they created don't know what is happening to our people that we are being killed will she allow british people britons to be killed the way the same way that friends are being killed will she be happy the answer is no why do they hate us these are the people that gave us the bible gave us anglican church methodist church uh presbyterian one uh which other one is a baptist they gave us um just name it 
and our people from our brothers from Rome gave us Catholic. But in everything they do, they support Islam. In all of these people, all they do is support it to come and kill us. That is the truth. You may not want to hear, but this is, you know me, I don't, honestly speaking, I don't give a damn how you feel, if you're happy, if you're, that is entirely your business. I am here to speak the truth. If you go and research it, you know I'm telling you the truth. Very sad indeed. They have come to see what is uh, happening to us. And our people are complaining. They say it is harassment. That our people are being uh, harassed. Uh, if we go on the road, uh, they, they, they kill us. If we come out, they... who are the ones complaining? Southeast commuters. Southeast commuters. Land harassment, extortion by soldiers. The same thing I told you. How many years ago did I tell you? It's, it's, it's all over the place. And I told you then that you will lament and nobody will listen to you. Because anything I say here is gospel. It must come to pass. I told you that you will lament. Fulani will deal with you to such an extent that you'll be lamenting. But nobody will listen to you. Is anybody listening? My commissioner to come and listen to our complaints. She is coming to see how, how well Ibasu uh, is doing. But we should go to Abba. Go to Abba now and see how well he's doing. They come online and show you pictures of flyover in Taiwan as some idiots are jumping up and down. Calling a murderer excellence. <laughs> this UG black, black people, black. This UG. Hey. You people have taken ignorance to a whole new level. You have taken ignorance to a whole new shining level. I'm telling you the truth. We are lamenting. That is all we do. We lament. We lament. And tomorrow they say, oh, one Nigeria. We want to be in one Nigeria. My country is Nigeria. People without shame. My country is Nigeria. Let me tell you what they are reporting in the papers. They said, commuters and drivers plying various roads in the southeast have lamented the high level of intimidation and extortion by soldiers at checkpoints. Who brought them? It was Umahi. Obiano. They brought them into our land to kill us because they don't like freedom. They like the way they are. You, the, you see them yesterday. The the CPM governor, the way he he kneels down. After all, what was also kneeling down <laughs> a few years ago. We understand to be the president. Once you kneel down, I'll imagine it was hey, look at me, kneeling down. Yeah, uh, 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 I be say you you go school, but here you are kneeling down. Okay, Nyamini, get up. I'll give you CBN governor. Nyamini, what do you want? Senator, I make this Nyamini senator. Those are the idiots you call your leaders. Those are the fools you call your leaders. Now the army is there. It was our great leader's um, birthday lecture yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Ojuku, the pioneer of what we are doing today. It was his birthday. They could not use that opportunity to say that what the soldiers are doing on our streets is intolerable. No, they couldn't. They cannot say it. They're not IPOB, so they can't say it. Only IPOB can. And some people still call them leaders. People, commuters are complaining to punch newspaper, not to their elected so called, I mean, I'm Abuja representing uh, Newi South constituency at the Federal House of Assembly, whatever they call it. But there are soldiers in your village, 15 checkpoints in the Newi, extorting money from people, and you're a lawmaker in Abuja. All that you care about is Nigeria is one, cannot be broken up. What are Salamachiris in your village raping your mothers? And you're a leader. Somebody, you wake up in the morning and you call all these people your leaders. I, I don't understand. What do you understand to be leadership? Does it mean you don't know the meaning of the word leadership? Or what a leader is supposed to be doing? Or what a leader is supposed to be saying? Instead of complaining to a European newspaper punch, why don't you complain to your so-called leaders? And uh, I got to watch Rosa 1, 2, 3 to 12. Because you don't reason properly. There is a saying in Ebola, and I have you don't abandon the correct process and procedure of doing something and you think you get any traction out of it. Of course not. You are being extorted because you are in one Nigeria. 
you are being extorted because you believe in one Nigeria. You are being extorted because you are foolish enough to believe that the colonies will ever like you. You are hopeless. You don't know. Commuters uh, crying. <laughs> And uh, you would think that perhaps uh, there is a problem or uh, maybe the issues are that um, uh, there is insecurity. Let us hear what the army has to say. And this clip you are about to hear is everywhere on social media, it's on Facebook, it's everywhere. Uh, if Facebook hasn't taken it down, you know, because um, Facebook is working for the zoo. You know that Facebook is working for Nigeria. So they do all they can to suppress every IPOB, Biafra, Nam the can related article, of course, you know that very well. But um, this is not about IPOB, but something came out of it. And I want you to, I'm going to play a clip for you. Let me try and get it and play it for you. So you will listen and understand what is happening in the zoo. And anybody from Biafra claiming they are one Nigeria, one Nigeria, the one, after listening to this clip, you will feel ashamed of yourself and your family that you, 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 you came from. I'm going to play a clip for you. And I want you to listen very attentively and understand the mess we are in, the mess that the British High Commissioner will not let you see you nor know, understand. I want people to appreciate uh, the nonsense that is happening to us and um, pray to Elohim for IPOB to give us more strength and courage. I'm going to play it for you. You must listen attentively, please. Listen very carefully. Amaka is in this post, so she cannot post this on my wall. But listen, and I want this shared everywhere to those who are listening. Very, very, I think it was Niger Loop that put the video together. <laughs> very, very interesting. But as with every other thing, it, it enters through one ear, the, the, the right ear, and goes out through the left one because we are black. We don't retain critical information, we don't analyze it, and we don't utilize it. In any other country of the world, after this very testimony by this lawmaker, Nigeria army will be recalled back into the barracks immediately. But uh, you are black, <laughs> dumb, and uh, sometimes a bit uh, foolish. What can you do? Nothing. You, you keep lamenting to a newspaper columnist about your life when you have all it takes in your hands to decide that enough is enough. When will enough be enough for some of you? Let me play this clip for you so you understand it. I'm, I'm going to play it if it will play. Members, members of the press and staff of this National Assembly, if you ask them to bring out their national ID card, I don't think you can have more than 50% of people that can pass through this door. The truth of the matter is it has not been provided to all Nigerians. As I'm talking to you now, and I want you to, call, to talk to the theater in Borno, by 6 a.m., if you go to National ID Card Office in Maiduguri, you have more than 2,000 people without fear of any contradiction. He went up. Among them, you have Chadians, you have people from Niger Republic, you have people from Kamado Republic. They are queuing up. And one of the requirements for you to get to the National ID Card is for you to just have access to indigenization letter from any of the local government, which is very porous. Everybody can go and obtain indigenous letter for, one, for a local government and acquire national ID card. Another thing, which is so pathetic, the content of the national ID card contains expiry debt. It has never been in the history of mankind where a national identification item is content expiry debt. So if at all my card now is expired, this shows I'm not holding one. So, sir, I'm just trying for, uh, just as a matter of emphasis, what is happening, let me, let me just round up. And lastly, with regards to the issue of uh, persons, persons holding means of identification will be allowed by the military men whenever they are conducting maybe cordon and such to me. I'm a barrack boy. My father is a retired military officer. I have never seen a situation whereby a military man is doing a job or police work, if I can put it, or paramilitary work. 
I've never seen it in my life. We went to my degree for an oversight. One of the problem of Nigerian army is lack of uh, manpower. And now you want to overstretch the, 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 the limited number you have for this. So, sir, so this is it. The Nigerian uh, state is... I will not allow the army officer to respond. I will do that later. But you've just heard the voice of an um, al from the north. He's, uh, he said he's a Barak boy. The father was, um, as with all of them in the north, uh, the father was a military man because the British rightly advised us to be going to school, which is a good thing. Um, no, in fact, you have to farm to do other things to send your child to school in Biafra land. I will award it very well by extending um, a scholarship to a great number of people in the West and in the North, they went to the military because the British told them, don't worry, leave those people. They, they want to read book. Here, just take the AK, take the assault rifle. That is where the power lies. So everybody in the North is in the army. Once you can read A, B, C, D to, a, to, to M, you can go into the army. Not to Z or no, that, that may be too difficult for some of them. Now listen to what this man said. At least he has conscience. He has conscience. He's a lawmaker. Do you know what he said? He said that the whole ID card nonsense that the army is using to come to Biafra land to intimidate, to rape, to pillage, and to extort is non-existent. That's number one. There is no ID card. They have not issued ID card to anybody. But they have said that they are coming and they're inspecting ID cards in our land. When the man responds, you will hear what he has to say, the army officer. This man also said that you people talk, you know, when people talk about one Nigeria, I, 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 I just, I go into apoplectic rage. I, am I, I try, I go insane. This is a lawmaker, so he knows more than you. He's from the north. What did he, he said that Chadians, people from Niger and Cameroon, are coming into Katsina, into Sokoto, into Kano, into Ebron, and collecting your Nigerian ID card. Are you not listening? Are you deaf? Is this the one Nigeria you're defending? I'm asking you, is this the one Nigeria you are defending? I'm asking you this question. Where somebody can just stroll over from, from Chad and, and the man said it's not difficult. What does it take to get a national ID card to become a Nigerian? So when you go outside and commit crime, they say it is uh, people from Biafra. Access to a local government, just local government letter. They all speak... Um, uh, fufu that they speak, uh, house that they speak, whatever. They go, I uh, do you know who is who. Do you know? Can you tell one uh, Alamajri beggar from the other? Between Babi Allah, they go and collect their ID card. But they are Chadians, they are from Niger, and they're from the Cameroon. And you're you are you are in the south talking nonsense about one Nigeria as if you're insane. Do you see how hopeless your own Nigeria is? This is from a lawmaker, a lawmaker, a lawmaker in the zoo, in Nigeria, telling you that your ID card is a scam. He also said that uh, the ID card has expired. It. It's just like saying to those in the UK that your NI card or your, yes, your NI card has an expiry date. How can they have an expiry date? But only in the zoo, all they try to do is to extort you. And instead of you to rise up and revolt, join IPOB, do what is needed to be free. You'll be thinking about uh, 2072 is our turn. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, you're not uh, black African for nothing. You must exhibit some level of stupidity. It comes with, you know, with the territory of where you come from. Very sad indeed. He grew up in the barracks and he said, this is Alamadjidium, and he said, I have never seen a military man doing police work especially even in a democracy how can a military man be doing police work what is the essence of democracy are we in a democracy or military rule i will allow the army man to answer in a minute and the lawmaker also said there is no manpower in Bruno. they don't have soldiers to fight boko haram in Bruno, but they have soldiers in Dafra land intimidating us and why they do it because your so-called governors, you don't want to know our leaders, your so-called leaders, they are there. They invited them to come. Where there is insurgency in the north, nothing is happening. Where there is no manpower, no, 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 they will not redeploy there. Why should they? They have 
Judeo Christians in the East to come and suppress and kill and pillage. And Britain is clapping for them. Now, let us hear what the army has to say. And this will shock you. Even if you are so stupid that you cannot put one on one together to get to, what this man is about to say will shock you. If I thought you have any brain left in your skull. You know me, I don't mince words here. I don't believe in 20 words. To say something so you will feel good about yourself, you must be insane. Because you have refused to reason. You've refused to learn. Army are in your village killing people. Fulani hates men, which is Miet Yala, are in your village raping your mothers, destroying your farmland, taking over your land. And you are in Lagos and in Abuja saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, one, I'm part of one Nigeria. And you're telling me that you're normal? You see, Mrs. Ruoke? No, I don't think so. Let us hear what the army has to say. <laughs> and this will shock you. Please listen very carefully. State is in a war situation. And whether I would like it or not, even though the constitution has not been suspended, we are doing everything in line with the constitution because the constitution empowers the Nigerian army to come in aid of other security agencies when the need arises and to con I will stop him there. Even though the constitution has not been suspended, but the army have themselves unilaterally suspended the constitution because they are using raw power and intimidation because they know that Jubril is not Buhari. So that once you get up and you speak, you'll be killed. That's what they're doing. He has, he has opened his mouth to say it. Although it's not been suspended. A whole... Do, because you people did not write it. It's the same thing as with the zoo in Nigeria. In fact, um, it just occurred to me now. I'm trying to draw this parallel. Lugard came from Scotland and came and created the zoo. All of you are jumping one Nigeria, one Nigeria, because of course you're, you're daft. The same way that uh, uh, a poorly educated military man, Abdul Salami, wrote constitution for civilians. And all of you are jumping up and saying you defend that constitution of Nigeria. That is why they sack loyal uh, judges at will. That is why they do whatever they like. That is why corruption is rampant. That is why the army can go up one day and say they have suspended the constitution. Oh, but you're all answering democracy or democrats by mouth. By mouth. By mouth only. How can you claim you are in a democracy when the army is on the streets molesting people, asking for a non-existent document, an ID card that somebody from Chad can come and take and go? Are you telling me you, you people are okay at all? You, you people, you fool, those that call them, are you, are you people, are you normal? Are, are you sure your brain is okay? Oh, dear me. Let's continue to hear him. The, the army have on their own suspended the constitution. You can't do anything about it. Abakia is in charge. The cabal is in charge. Such other functions as may be approved by the National Assembly. And uh, I think that is what we are doing. And uh, many of these activities, you may not necessarily, they are not enumerated in the constitution. So they are not even things you can say, oh, we say we are supposed to. Do you hear what he said? The things they are doing is not in the constitution. What the army is doing, it is not constitutional. It is not in the constitution. Then why are they doing it? Because there is martial law that some of you don't know. The army spokesman opened his mouth and said, what we are doing is not in the constitution. And, uh, and if it is not in the constitution, who authorized you to do it? Who gave you the power to do it if it's not in the constitution? Is it National Assembly? The answer is no. The National Assembly never voted and asked to do all these things you're doing. And so you know, so the, so brother, you know that what he's doing is not in the constitution, but they're doing it anyway. Because Nigerians are fools. Complete and utter fool animals they are. This, this and that. But in the course of doing that particular major activity, we come up with other ideas and other activities that support that particular activity. The army is coming up with their own ideas. Not according to law, no. You can. This is this is the man. This is an army. I don't know his name. He's an army spokesman. Is that the video? I want some to all of you. I want this video to be shared everywhere. It was put together quite cleverly by Niger Loop. May God bless them. Of course, they can go. They can buy them over tomorrow and ask them to attack IPOB, Biafra, and Nam. The can. It doesn't matter. But if you do something right, we, we commend you. This video must be put everywhere. The army said, we make up our own laws. We decide what to do. That's what he's saying. We, the army, we decide what to do. We make up laws and anything we like, we do. You are bloody civilians. You can't do anything about it. In a democracy in Africa. Only in Africa. 
because an African man doesn't actually understand the meaning of white man's democracy. They don't know the meaning of it. Their brain cannot comprehend it. Let's continue to listen to this um, very fluid and erudite army spokesman. I think we're in line. So I want to use the opportunity to uh, appreciate you and call on you and let you know that, look, this particular activity or this particular operation that the military is undertaking, because it's not affecting your area doesn't mean you should not be concerned. You must be concerned because it's affecting everybody. This is Ami speaking in a democracy. Ami is telling you you should be you should be afraid in a democracy. Democratic dividend. You know those that nonsense they keep saying. Democratic fruits of democracy. The the whatever of democracy. This is the army telling you you should be afraid. You have to be afraid. The army is telling you to be afraid. Can you believe such nonsense in a democracy? I don't believe this. The army is telling you, you zoo people, Nigerians, you should be afraid in a democracy. Not, 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 not shouldn't be afraid or um, Yeti Allah shouldn't be afraid or um, ISIS in West Africa or Al Qaeda in the Maghreb. No, you, the ordinary citizens, because you are gullible, because you are foolish, because you cannot listen very well. Let's continue to hear this man. And uh, if it's a business for everybody. I think uh, it is what uh, the whole Nigerians should see as our project and support the military and the army particularly to ensure that we bring this uh, challenge to a halt. The next one is from, uh, if you don't hear any operation, taking your place because that means it's peaceful. Of course, I can tell you Crocodile Smile is actually designed for the south, south and southwest, but we are focusing on the southeast because, of course, there are no challenges. Or the, the other... Are you listening? Operation Crocodile Smile, which is Army Operation, was designed for the lower part of Biafra land, the so-called South, South, and Southwest, which is Oduduwa. I won't call them the river anymore because my good friend, my very learned friend, because he's a scholar. Tell me, Fanikayode is a scholar. He's a student of history. When I see idiots uh, that even uh, break chalk, talking nonsense, I just sweep them aside because they have no brain. Did you hear what the man said? Operation Crocodile Smile was for South, South, and Southwest, but we are focusing on Southeast. And somebody from Igbo land will go and say, I'm a Nigerian. The army is persecuting you. They have come out now to say, it. not, it is peaceful. He, had, he accepted though, that the place is peaceful. But we are focusing there all the same. And you're telling me that, um, Anybody who calls himself a Nigerian should not be brought outside and, and burnt at the stake. Is that what you're telling me? Oh dear. I'm not going to continue with this, to be honest. I can't. It's very sad indeed. The army is telling you that they are focusing on your area. And you talk about, we came to do all this Operation Crocodile, Smile, Operation Python Dance, because of insecurity, is that correct? Who is bringing the insecurity? I've told you it is the full people and their soldiers. This is a news report in Edo State. <laughs> I'll read the headline for you. Police, police arrest soldiers for kidnapping and robbery. The same full and soldiers telling you, we are coming to do Operation Patrol. Show your ID card. They are the ones actually doing the kidnapping. The army themselves. The police want to arrest them. Nigerian army. <laughs> so these are the people asking for helicopter gunships. Uh, maybe to incre increase the, the kidnapping and the, and the harvesting of people and organs. You can see it. Uh, I, I, we went to Russia. We are asking for four helicopter gunships. We went to America. We want helicopter. Uh, Britain is helping us with uh, guns and ammunition. I want the High Commissioner for Britain and every mission to Nigeria to know that every arm, every pistol, every assault rifle, every bullet you give to Nigerian army goes into lawlessness, into kidnapping and robbery. If in doubt, ask the Edo State Police Command. The army people are the ones doing the kidnapping. Is here. Is in, in, look at them arrested. It's in, in black and white. And uh, tomorrow people will write, uh, I, I support our army. I support it. Is your army fighting any war outside the borders of the zoo? No. Then why do you support them in suppressing civilians? Why do you have the police? Are they not armed? Don't the police police carry the same AK-47? Are you all not corrupt? All of you together. Both those who are leading and those who are led. Are you 
not all corrupt. Of course, say for those who are in IPOB, the army people are the ones doing the kidnapping. They are the ones making life difficult for everybody. They think we will not know. But we know. And that is what we are exposing tonight. And um, talking, I want to prove to people tonight that everything to do with lawlessness is coming from the north. The army, they're, they're the ones being arrested. Doing army, army, the same army. They, they announce operation, pattern dance, they come and they start kidnapping people. The same army that you came to fight crime, they create the, the, the crime themselves. And there are brothers that help. Miyeti Allah is not just insulting everybody, but threatening everybody. His name is um, Bodejo. I don't know where he comes from. You know what he said? No apologies for Benue killings. <laughs> As I said to them in America, it's just like somebody coming and saying, I killed, I mean, Hutu. I killed all those people, Tutsis, in, in Rwanda. And I'm proud of it. And I make no apologies. And I think, I think the whole world will go mad. But in the zoo that is called Nigeria, you can go in, slaughter, rape, destroy, <laughs> you know, weave your carnage all over the place because you're full of cattle and the fourth most deadly terror group in the world. You stand up in front of everybody to say, no apology, no apologies for Benway killings. And there'll be no peace in the south of the so-called zoo called Nigeria. Uh, because you have said so, you are fallen, and you are in one Nigeria. And tomorrow, idiots will come up and say, We love one Nigeria. This is Alamajiri, probably from heaven knows, maybe from Senegal or from uh, the farthest reaches of Niger, coming to tell you what to do in your land. And uh, I'm a Nigerian, the green, white, green. <laughs> oh dear. It's very sad indeed. It's depressing. What did he say? What did this Alamajiri say? He is the national president of Mieti Yala. Kautalo uh, Hore, social, cultural, social. It's a murderous group, the fourth most deadly terror group in the world. They kill you and they come out and they say, uh, we even want money for those killings. Remember when El Rufai paid them to stop the killing of Christians in southern Kaduna? Uh, you have forgotten. You are Nigerians, isn't it? You always forget. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. He said, I am the national president of Miet Yala. I didn't apologize to anybody. Our organization didn't apologize to anybody because Fulani hates men. Didn't kill or hasn't killed anybody. The same Fulani hates men that House of Rock said they're from Mali, from Niger, from Burkina Faso. All of a sudden, they have not killed anyone. And they, you see the way they enjoy national limelight. <laughs> but IPOB that is fighting for, that is how stupid a black man is. IPOB that is actually fighting for your freedom. We contribute our money. We sacrifice our lives. We do everything possible to bring about your freedom. We are terrorists. But those coming to your farms, raping your mothers, they are Good Nigerians. Do you know why you reason that way? Because you're a black person. You are black. That is why Africa is backwards. Because of the way we reason. And hopefully it will come to an end very, very soon. Miet Yala. And they are dividing and destroying our land. Dividing and destroying our land. Do you know the funniest thing? They said they're coming to demarcate the boundary between Eboi and Benu. But in this area, Bonyan Beno, they're the same family, the same people. It was full and it came and divided us into two. Put some in Benue, some in Ebony, the same family. The same thing they did to, to, to Ohaji in Imo. Some are in uh, Rivers. Of course, we are brothers. We know that. But we're just merely pointing out the evil that happened. Some of you don't know that Obaru in Anambra State has more in common with people from Onichubo than those from 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 new across the road or those from obosi in fact people from obosi have more in common with the gala people as i keep saying all the time the man he wake is actually from the gala 
and there is the atta of a pussy, which is the same way you have the atta of a gala. But you don't know these things, do you? Zoo won't teach you all these things. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, Nigeria is evil. Very, very evil. They call them the National Boundary Commission. They said they have started preliminary work to demarcate boundaries and communities in a way. Is it for you to come to our land to divide our land for us? Don't we know who we are again? They said the meeting is chaired by uh, the disgraced Vice President Yemi Yosuba. You know, he has no shame. You know, in, in Africa, people have no honor and no shame, no dignity. No matter, and it, no matter what they do to him, he, he will stay back. He's the VP. He wants to answer uh, commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That's how foolish people are. No honor and no dignity. He is the one they've appointed to preside over the boundary issue. <laughs> They said they'll come up with a program today. Do, do you know who they're demarcating? You see the way they, they now call you Ebony and Benue, boundary dispute. These are the same Igbo people. That's how they divide us now. Some say, oh, I'm, I'm from Cross River. I'm, I'm not Igbo. I'm from Delta. Don't say I'm Igbo. That is how foolish we have become. But it will not happen because very soon our people will know the truth. Our people will know the truth. And that is why this very evening, as teachers are begging, a governor contesting. Because they know that Bello will be rigged into power. The, the teachers are now begging. Please, can you tell us our 39 months salary arrears, please? People that claim that is power in PVC, they, they hold the PVC in their hand. They, they hold, they're holding it. And the man who is supposed to pay their salaries have squandered everything in the fight against co co corruption, as they would say in the magic territory. Bello is busy. He has squandered money belonging to teachers. I think the author of the gala made him, gave him a national, uh, a, a, a chief tenancy title. Because he has no conscience, has no soul. People are evil in black Africa. Evil to the core. Imagine if your wife, your sister, your brother, your uncle, your aunt is a teacher in Kogi. And they've not paid her or him for 39 months. Will you still support the governor? They, this is to say that your PVC is useless. They hold the PVC. They have the, the powers in their hands to actually get rid of the governor. But will they do it? The answer is no. Do you know why they won't do it? Because they are black. Do you think a, do you think a white man will put up with this rubbish? Of course not. Of course not. Of course, of course we are black. And on that very sad note, I know that a lot of people have been seeing some messages. They said they're listening to us with their data. And uh, because of that, they have actually run out. But there is one particular piece of news I must bring to your attention. It's about Abba Kiari, who is actually the president of Nigeria. Some of you know, but pretend you don't know. Some of you also have seen the latest portrait of Jubril that the circulated claiming is Buhari. Jubril is meant to be 76 years of age. Hamid Ali, who is the computer general of, um, of um, customs, is 64 years. <laughs> but it looks as if um, Hamid Ali is the father of um, Jubril. Of Buhari, I should say. <laughs> oh, dear me. Zoo. Who did this to black people? Is it, where did we get this stupidity from? Is it, is it, it must be genetic. It sounds very depressing. But that is the truth. It must be genetic because there is no other plausible explanation that a people can be so useless to the point that you're showing them something and they say, no, but I can't see it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Unbelievable. They took Bill to a president the claim is theirs in London to sign, to assent to a bill. Now, let me ask you this. And if you can do a minor research, please, if you may, go and check and tell me how many times a sitting president anywhere in the world, even in, in the worst banana republic, 
ever signed a bill abroad. Go and do your own research. That is how foolish you Nigerians are. Your so daft is untrue. Some are clapping. Hey, he's the chief of staff. He, can, he is the president. He is the one running the zoo. Buhari is no more. He recruited the little boy, uh, Jubril. Go to London, he will go. I'll bring you the deal there to sign, he will go. In fact, I promised that I was going to play a clip for you. And I hope I will be able to, to find it. There is a clip I want to play for you uh, that um, shows your so-called um, um, uh, 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 president or whatever, uh, Jubril and the old Buhari. And ask me, the any country on this earth that will ever vote for somebody like that into power? But you are Nigerians now. What, what do you know? What do you know? What do you know? Very, very sad indeed. Extremely sad. I said I was going to do this. And um, I want to do it very briefly because I know some people are, they, they are a bit tired. I know they are a bit tired. <clears throat> I, know, I know that they are a bit tired. So I know that some of them, some of you are getting very, very tired right now because your data is running out. They said they should reduce the data. Uh, I don't know if they have done that or not. Um, I'm fine. I'm looking for. I, I couldn't just find. I think it's just escaped. Maybe um, next time I will try and play that for you. Uh, most uh, possibly over the weekend. Um, that brings us to the end of the program tonight. I've had to truncate it, and all I can say to some of you is to remain resolute, remain part of this very noble family, and if you want to acquire some common sense, you must be part of IPOB regardless of where you are because all we seek is truth justice and fairness not in the words that we speak but the actions that we carry out on a daily basis and on behalf of all the crew with me from me from here it is good evening Thank mm -hmm. you.